Welcome back to the Petapixel Podcast. I'm Jaron Schneider, and I'm joined by Chris Nichols and Jordan Drake. And uh, as you can tell, this is not our normal setup. We're uh, we're coming to you from uh, Apple Park in their lovely podcasting studio. It's it's only slightly fancier than my setup. Um, <laughs> it's and that's really fancier than mine. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> much fancier. We can't uh, we can't do fancy lights in the back though. That's the uh, I, difference. I guess I need more lights. I'm really, I'm I'm not doing a good job. Uh, well, what we're going to talk about today is we're going to try and keep this uh, short and sweet to a couple topics. Uh, we're going to talk, of course, about the Apple iPhone launch mm. today. We have some things we'd like to discuss that didn't quite make it into the full video that we published yesterday. And then also we are going to talk about the Fujifilm GFX, the new, it's the GFX uh, 102. Two. Yes. And uh, we have thoughts. Yeah. We don't have experiences. <laughs> we just have thoughts. <laughs> I, I actually got to see one in the in the wild today, actually here at the Apple Park event. Did you? Yes, I did. I got to really? see. Yeah. I, I didn't get to touch it because that's somebody else's property apparently and so she said no but and yeah okay whatever well, but i'm actually surprised that i did not know this oh, so beautiful we'll get into that beautiful. but uh, all right let's get started <laughs> All right, so our podcast is, of course, coming to you from a very different location than normal, but happily, our sponsor is the same. They make this show possible. Thank you to OM System, because just this morning, they have released an exciting new product. It is the TG7. I mean, this is a rugged, freeze-proof, splash-proof, dust-proof, drop-it-anywhere kind of camera, and it's got a very nice f2.0 wide-angle lens. The Tough TG7 also gives you raw recording and a four times optical zoom lens to ensure you capture perfection with fast shutter speeds and minimal blur. If you're a macro lover, you're gonna love getting as close as one centimeter from the edge with a stunning seven times magnification thanks to the variable macro system. Additional features include construction mode, GPS, vertical video, pro capture mode, interval shooting with time-lapse movie generation, and USB Type-C charging. That's a new feature that we really like. It makes this camera a powerhouse of possibilities. The OM System Tough TG7 is your key to capturing extraordinary images, whether you're diving underwater, braving freezing temperatures, or exploring rugged terrains. To learn more about the TG7, visit explore.omsystem.com slash petapixel. The TG7 will be available on the OM System website, as well as authorized OM System retailers by the end of the month for $549.99 US, that's $749.99 Canadian. Don't forget to visit the OM System website so you can get complete details and specifications. But again, thank you to OM System for making the show possible. Let's get back to the podcast. Okay, so let's lead this off. Let's start with the GFX. I think we'll do that. We'll then do Apple. And then we're going to actually throw to an interview that we did with Blair Bunting, uh, the photographer that went to the edge of space in a U2 and took yes, a picture with the curvature cool. of the Earth, all that stuff. We have the documentary. We, If you haven't seen it yet, we really recommend you watch it because... Please watch the doc. <laughs> I worked so hard. <laughs> you worked very hard on it. And everyone who's watched it loves it. So yeah, it's it's a fantastic experience, and so I'm looking forward to uh, to that segment for sure. Um, but before that, so let's talk GFX 100, mm -hmm. guys. You guys, you you said you saw one today. I saw one today. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, people. Uh, someone was walking around with it. They uh, actually, were, I think, shooting video with it, which is very interesting. Is that, that not seems to be what it's for? Yeah, yeah we're going to talk about that. But it's beautiful. I have to say, like, it's a totally brand new body design. Um, of course, the original 100 GFX 100 was not my favorite. A monstrosity. Yeah. Aesthetically, aesthetic. <laughs> very heavy. I hate vertical grips. It has that incorporated. So this new. But one. It had the worst vertical grip. Yeah, I, it was terrible. It was so this thin, awful. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. So the <laughs> so the new one is so much better. I mean, it is uh, compact like the 100s. Very interesting lines. Totally different redesign. The grip looked very comfortable. So wait, you saw someone with it? Yes. Did they? Did you like? Recognize? Did you tell them, "Hey, I recognize that camera"? Or did you just watch it walk past? Yeah, you? no. I mean, I, I more of like a creepy kind of. Yeah. Thing. When did this even like, happen? Like a, you know, I mean, there's lots of cameras there. It's, it's exciting. So this was this right, one right we... after the right after the uh, keynote presentation. Okay. Yeah. Got everybody it. was milling around, and I was trying to look at beautiful phones, and I was like, "Oh, what is that?" Uh, all right. So let's talk thoughts. What do you guys want to say about the GFX 102? 
I mean, I'll start. Like, the big thing is it's a much faster readout on this camera now. Mm. Um, that's the thing they're really talking about, which is great. That's something we like to see in cameras. It means better autofocus, better video capability. Uh, and they are really gearing this as a video camera. What's weird is, you know, it's it's faster than what we saw before, <laughs> but you don't usually, like, buy a medium format camera for, like, I want to shoot this thing electronically or I want to shoot video. Or, right. You know, that's not really their forte. And even if it reads out twice as fast, which is what they're advertising, that's still not great. It's not, yeah, I mean, but it doesn't improve me because, I mean, the larger sensors, that's where you really struggle with readout speed, right? Just because of the larger size, larger surface area. So, you know, why don't we start this backwards? Because, as you say, the big push is for video. Mm -hmm. 8K footage on this camera, right? <laughs> Tell us about it, Jordan. Okay. I mean, you medium format and video go. <laughs> wow, you gesticulated there, like you really yeah. had something okay. to say. Yeah, there's a He's lot getting of getting emotional. A lot of caveats Calm with down. That. Okay. Calm down, everybody. Okay, so the big thing is, yes, it records 8K, but in a sensor area that's smaller than full frame. Yeah, it has to crop it, you know, because you're going from 102 megapixels down to 8K video, which is like 42. Uh, so that's not going to be probably your ideal record mode if you want that medium format aesthetic. If you want that medium format aesthetic, you can get it, but you're going to be shooting subsampled, not using all those pixels again, because the sensor's too slow for that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of you lose on either side of the spectrum. Now, the video quality is going to be good, but they're really, everything just seems to be designed for like, we're going to be able to use this with our new medium format cinema lenses, which are like $50,000 lenses and stuff. They're targeting high-end production oh, and video, filmmakers yeah. with this and uh, i just think there's better tools so you sound skeptical you don't think that this is going to be an ideal usage uh for video i mean I, if it was just for video i think it's a nice bonus to have that ability the problem is we just keep seeing when you have a faster reading sensor that the image quality drops a little bit and they're saying like we've compensated for this you can drop it down to iso 80 now mm -hmm. but the trade-off always seems to be faster reading sensor less image quality, less dynamic range. So it's an interesting compromise there. So do you, is there such a thing at, with this camera, in your opinion, as medium format look in video? It sounds like not really. Uh, we've done a video. <laughs> uh, we did a little myth busting section where we shot, you know, you can take a medium format camera and you can duplicate the look with other systems, yeah. you know, and it's great. Like the quality is excellent on those, but it's not a completely unique look you can never access any other way. That's just a myth that's been with us since, I don't know, you're older than me. How long have we had this myth, Chris? Uh, a long time. Thank yes, you. a very long time. You're right. Thank you for pointing that out to everybody. Um, yeah, I should have stolen the camera because honestly, like the other. <laughs> That's a good lead. I, I just been like, do you know who I am? And then taking the camera. Um, <laughs> they would have been like, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but so the the thing I want to course test is for photography. We love the 100s. I mean, that 100 megapixel sensor. I think we've said it multiple times. It's really probably the best image quality you're going to find on a camera right now, and great dynamic range. Obviously, tons of resolution. So Fujifilm is saying that this new sensor, although still similar resolution, is advancing things as far as dynamic range goes, low light performance, right? Yeah, and I think they're only doing that at 80, the new base ISO. I think if you were to shoot equivalent ISOs through the range, this will be slightly worse. Yeah. That's my prediction. Yeah, so that's something we definitely want to test uh, when we get a chance to play with it. But um, yeah, how do you guys feel then? So we've talked about how medium format cameras tend to be used for studio applications. They tend to be used for landscape. That's yeah. obviously very popular use. Single case. shot, composed image, that's where medium format sings. Yeah. Now, you guys are pretty skeptical about the uh, the faster frame rate, the faster burf rate, burst rates, the, the faster focusing. Maybe it has a faster birth rate, too. I don't know. Uh, so my question, actually, that I posed in my notes over here was, who is this camera for? If I'm a medium format guy, and I was a medium format guy for a while, I loved the concept of medium format. At no point was I thinking, man, I sure wish this shot faster. Because <laughs> it's, it doesn't make any sense. I, medium format is used for product photography, portraits in studio, and landscapes, as you said. And in those cases, I do not need to shoot faster. I just okay. need to look nicer. That's so, it. So I'm on the other end of this because I'm like, look, we have a faster reading sensor. So autofocus is going to have better performance. We have a camera that can shoot eight frames per second mechanical. I mean, that's good. That gets yeah, but why? Because you might want to shoot street with, I want to shoot street photography. Okay. With this you, camera. Did bring, you did bring up that the last one became a very good street camera. Is that right? Yeah, the autofocus yeah. got good enough. And uh, Chris kind of touched on it. Like when I was shooting the 100S, I was pretty happy that the iDetect worked 
quite consistently. Yeah. If it's better, then that's great because you are still dealing with pretty shallow depth of field with these cameras. So yeah, it'll be able to tackle. You know, we all know some fashion photographers who will machine gun with strobes. Sure, and that's been their main thing. I just find like the that there will be some compromises in, unless they've broke new ground that we've never seen before right. with this to facilitate that video recording that I think is quite honestly not ideal for most professional applications. Right. Well, I think for photography, it's a win. Uh, I mean, does someone want to shoot sports with a medium format yeah. camera? So, I don't, so, I wouldn't do it. But so answer the question, wants. who is this for? Is this so street photographer, but at the same time, it's supposed to be a video camera. They put a ton of video features video in it, camera? but a street photographer is not going to be shooting video. And who's shooting medium format video? I would use eight frames per second for uh, fashion work. I would use eight frames per second for a portrait session. And, uh, you know, landscapes, they, they don't move very quickly, but, you know, for safety I mean, sake. For, for who's using medium format video, it's yeah. filmmakers using an Alexa 65. Like, yeah. there is absolutely a use for that. Now there's more of a, a glass ecosystem for it. So, And you'll be able to adapt those lenses to this. You know, they're saying, like, we've got a PL mount that you'll be able to throw endless weight on it mm -hmm. for filmmaking. But if you're going to invest that kind of money in the crew that comes with it, I think you'll get a dedicated yeah. video camera. So I guess I'm happy... You guys are sad. I'm not I wanna, I wanna that's usually how the show ends up anyway. I right? have a firm opinion. I'm playing devil's advocate. <laughs> I actually don't have a strong opinion at all because I haven't used any of the Fujifilm medium format systems. Did so I uh, mention how sexy this camera looks from a distance? Is that what is the distance? Is that like ten? Did it people? get uglier oh, as I was you got cl closer? No, I could, I could have touched. I could have just. <laughs> but you didn't. I could have run with it. I could have just taken it and run with it. All right. Okay. Hopped on a golf cart. You know, like please, Apple staff, get me down on the exit right away. <laughs> all right. Well. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's move on and talk about today. So we yes. were here at Apple Park. We saw the iPhone, the watch launch. Uh, we made a video earlier. Anything you want to say that you didn't say in that video? Yeah, so one thing that I want to say that I didn't say in that video is I'm not an existing Apple user. I know all the people that are helping us with the podcast now are looking at me with like an evil eye. They're like, oh, I'm not like super civil. somebody usher this person out. So I'm, I'm here at this event. I've got a Google in my in my pocket and i felt so strange so yeah it was it was everybody was very nice everybody's very nice everybody's what, very welcoming they're always civil i know but but it was very strange so yeah this is so this is the thing like it's neat to come to this. this is the first time i've been to apple park it's neat to see the experience it's easy when you don't use these products to then be like ah oh, you know you guys you're on your side and i'll stay on my side but no it was neat to see a lot of the features you know handling controls i know you guys want me to have an apple phone you want me to be able to jordan wants so badly to be able to airdrop me things and have me airdrop him it things. would make my life so much easier i just want us to have an easy group chat that seems that's yeah, just, just simple to know that text messages have gone to yeah. everyone so, our, like i don't know whose fault it is I'm not put, pointing any fingers, but whenever he texts me anything longer than about 10 words, it splits it into multiple texts and it cuts it off mid word. So it'll end if he's trying to write the word F O R, it'll start with an F and then the next one will be or it, it's, it's not good. So, right. Okay. So I, you know, I, the products look great. The colors are beautiful, but anyways, we, we definitely look at lots of different products. I mean, it's not like I'm uh, married to a brand of camera either. So I always right. look at these as it's a piece of gear. What does it offer? And so photographically, uh, I know that we we did review the iPhone 13, yeah. Jordan's iPhone 13 Pro. Um, you have a 14. I do. It's over here. Yeah. Uh, you and, do. And uh, we did do a video about the 14 as well. So yes. it's been kind of interesting because you've seen the progression on these. Yes. Where I am like, am I going to spend money on this? Because, <laughs> you know, I'm upgrading my phone plan. I've been an iPhone user forever. You get to come at it from kind of a different perspective of like, is this compelling to you like to this is my big question for you chris is like did this live up to or mm. surpass your expectations for what you thought they were going to introduce seeing as you've actually been that's a good watching question. the last few launches that's a good question i mean look i think that other phone companies do take nice photos right i mean i've seen it before sure sure but the first thing that always excites me with with jordan's phone is the hdr display and having that capability mm. and i know that apple is one of the only companies that really makes use of that in a big I completely way. forget that that's not normal. Yeah, no, you just appreciate the the gorgeousness yeah. and the and the, the dynamic range and the rich tones. So, yeah, to me that's that's interesting. Absolutely. And then from a pure camera standpoint, I mean, we've got an upgraded sensor size with this main camera. It's still nice and bright. 
I absolutely love the fact that now they're combining not only the amalgamation of their 12 megapixel quad Bayer shots, but also then combining that with a higher resolution uh, resolution 48 megapixel shot. So we're getting 24 megapixel files as their standard output. Yeah, that's nice. I think that is nice. And and even though you can kind of be skeptical and say, oh, people are only going to put these on Instagram. People are going to put these on websites. And that's true, totally. I think there's still a, a public perception that having the 24 is going to be desirable. And I do think there will be applications where just like applying sharpening is going to be better on the higher resolution. Zooming in is going to be hard. Obviously, cropping yeah. is going to be better. Yeah. So I do see that as a very substantial improvement. I mean, I mean, the big upgrade on the telephoto is exclusive to the Pro Max. We which haven't is, had that in a couple uh, generations where it, it was split like that. Exactly. Yeah. The last few years, it's been you get the same stuff, but you get the bigger screen and better battery life. So, I mean, I don't know the sales numbers, but I'm assuming that the Pro Max is generally not one of the best sellers. So having the extra resolution for all the other phones mean you will be actually able to zoom in a little bit and not deal with like a yeah. pixely mess, right? So that is a big upgrade for like the vast majority of the iPhones that are going to yeah. get out there. And the Pro Max is more expensive, but it also looked like you get more storage by default anyway. Base, so, yeah. you know, you're, I think it's going to sell if, very well. If you can handle it in your pocket. I have, I have small Oh, pockets. I can handle it in my pocket. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you, Jordan, while you, uh, cause I'm going to answer this after you give me your answer. Um, mm -hmm. While we were watching this, what was the point where you actually like leaned forward a little bit? What struck you? about the 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 new i'd say the pro models were the ones that would be the most likely to do this that made you like lean forward well even from the first one the idea that if it sees faces or animals, it's building a depth map because you might want to go back and mm -hmm. use that as a portrait image. Because yeah, yeah. there's been so many times where I take a picture of my kid doing something cute and it's like, oh damn it, I didn't shoot that in portrait. <laughs> yeah, for those so. for those listening who didn't actually read all the specs or whatever, now that the if the phone senses that there's people or animals in it, it will automatically assume that you may at one point want portrait mode. Yeah. yeah. So you don't have to manually select that; it just does it. And if you can, you can go back and change the aperture value. Um, air quotes. And your focal point, too. Yes. So yeah. that's really cool as well. If you're doing a group shot, you could pull multiple candidates almost out the of The dream one. of yeah. Lytro lives on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to this day. Long after, I don't know if they're dead, but they're... <laughs> no, they are very dead. Okay, thank Lytro you. is extremely <laughs> dead. They're gone long ago. But that was the our Lytro is, news update yeah. for this week. <laughs> but the spirit has been re yeah, revived into this kind of thing. You know, doing anything post is great. I know it never gets a lot of fanfare, but just having a new processing unit, I think, is fantastic. Uh, am I supposed to say processing? I don't know. I like processing. I forget which one's the American one. I, I think they're both processing. Yeah. I think I'm just very strange. But are. I'm going to go with processing because, um, yeah, the A17 processor, because honestly, your iPhone 13, the portrait mode, Mm. It's hit or miss. Mm. It's, you know, no, no. Okay. I'm, I'm going to get kicked out anyways because my phone, so I might as well say the truth. It's pretty bad. Like with p pulling out hair and stuff in the background, the 14 does a better job. It does. I don't use it that often, but it does do a better job. Right. So I expect it to get a little bit better and a little bit better each, each iteration. I, yeah. I'm expecting it to be better this round too. I think that'll be very positive. Plus the fact that if you get the max model and you're going to shoot 120 millimeters, you yeah. don't even so have to use portrait for the, for, Again, for those who may not have watched, the Pro Max, the thing it has that the Pro doesn't have is a new 120 millimeter actual optical zoom. And it's not yeah. using a periscope. It's using a Tetra prism. prism. Mm -hmm. It's like a bunch of triangles and it bounces it around so it can create more <laughs> zoom instead of can, making... Can we do it? Can we do it in our hands? <laughs> instead of making it physically like deeper, it bends stuff. Um, <laughs> it's it, the thing that your new age ant has, basically. But yes. the, it's a small version that's in a phone. Yeah. So I, I had to go look at my notes because I was taking notes as it went. And any time that I either wrote a cuss word or went, oh, crap, um, that's when I would know that I was leaning forward in my chair. I think what got me mm -hmm. was being able to record externally because we now have USB-C. Yep. Um, and that means you could do ProRes at up to 4K at 60, yep. which is nice. And the real one that got me was log encoding. I was going to... Yeah, that, I that took, was a huge you had your chance. Yeah, I asked I you did, what you wanted. I know, but I thought I'd just throw one to the photographer. No, <laughs> that's a big deal because yeah. we've seen simulated log as third-party apps and lots of things that are like Filmic Pro has had one for quite some time. Yeah, and it's yeah. desaturating the image, giving you a little more room to play with it afterwards. But it's not a true log mm. image where it's taking advantage of everything the sensor can offer. And we have to remember on all these iPhones, they're stacking like that HDR video is a stack of two images that they're blending together for you to create more dynamic range now you're gonna have access to that yeah while you're working with it so that's really cool I really hope we get a lot for that before our 
review goes <laughs> live, or I'm going to be hand grading this stuff. Um, but yeah, it's going to open up a whole lot more flexibility. And I mean, like Jaron touched on, recording externally to SSD um, makes it not only makes the ProRes actually useful because you'd fill up a phone and then wait forever for it to transfer over a lightning so cable, hard. which was a workflow that made no sense whatsoever. But also, so many people are going to say who would actually use that. But I know a lot of commercial photographer, videographers where the clients say, we want this shot on mobile. We want it to look like a social yeah. thing. So, you know, even if it's not vertical, they're like, we want that smartphone aesthetic to it. Uh, we see this all the time. And they're going to want the flexibility in post. They're going to be wanting to be able to pass it off to an editor, you know, in a larger scale. This is for those people. Hmm. So, you know, am I going to be shooting ProRes, filming my kids with a USB cable <laughs> stuck in my back pocket? <laughs> I'm going to get like one of those big orange old lacy drives, plug it in yeah. and run around. No, absolutely Only not. Only if you want the video feed to cut out halfway because you're running with a cable out of your pants. But how many of those like behind the scenes photos have you seen with an iPhone with like so much stuff mm. sticking out of it? It's for those people. Like an extra cable isn't going to be a huge difference. I'm curious to see how much better the cinematic mode is. And I'm curious also to see if you will now use the iPhone uh, for, you know, when we finally get to play with one, how much you'll use it for our show. Because honestly, up to this point, Jordan pretty much just uses iPhone if we missed something or if we have to get like a quick thing, a B-roll or something. Yeah, like they that. did something. In addition to the log, they're doing the they're do, they they join that color. It's, I don't know aces. Yeah, yeah. So, aces, they, yeah. so it's standardized. You can match cameras much more effectively. Yes. We, we saw some footage where they were mixing three different camera brands, one of them being the iPhone. I don't, what, what did you think of that? Yeah, I, I think it looked it really looked good. Right, I mean, they're right? playing absolutely to the iPhone strengths in that test. Correct. You know, sure. um, so you know, not shallow depth of field, long shots, that kind of stuff. Um, but I mean, in terms of just straight up matching skin tones, that's cool to see because how many times have we shot in a high contrast scene and I've pulled the iPhone out for like a safety grab or like yep. you said, we missed something and we get wax face. You know, yeah. it's, it's a notorious problem. And it's not just an iPhone. Like when we were reviewing the Pixel Fold, I was like, yeah. I, wax face gets worse. I mean, the older out, yeah. I get, the less I mind the wax face. But <laughs> I don't like. Yeah, I know face. you're like a technical person that way. So yeah. Um, what was I? Gonna, oh, so there's one thing that is. <laughs> I'm missing this. I turned my head, and you yeah, guys are laughing. It's fine. Uh, the one more thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, there's going to be. It's not in the phone. It won't be probably at launch. It'll come later because it doesn't need to happen immediately. But they will do uh, spatial video. Mm. So by holding yeah. it sideways, two of those lenses are going to be recording simultaneously to get depth, so that when you you can make video that will play correctly in the Vision Pro. That surprised me when I saw it, but then it was immediately, oh yeah, of course, yeah, because we need to be prepared for Vision Pro, which they still say they're on track to ship early next year. Yeah. So they need they need stuff in the wild that's capable of producing content. Mm. It had it. To, when they were even talking about it, and they're showing like relive those family moments in spatial video. Like I'm not showing up to my kid's party and mashing a Vision Pro, Pro in the kid's face as yeah. well while, while it's going on. Of course, it had to go to a more portable device. So right. this right. makes perfect sense. You know, I'm looking forward to. Would you, you would you use that though? Would you would you find that interesting to have 3D memories? So do I have do I have a Vision Pro? That's the first question. If well, I have one, yeah, okay, you'd have to have one. Yes, obviously. But let, yes, hypothetically, I bought you one for Christmas. Now you've got one. It's next year. You've got one now. You're supposed to say thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So now, are you going to use that to make 3D memories? Uh, it depends. Uh, my hope is that the workflow is I record video like I normally do. Right. And it also has that spatial video. Mm -hmm. If I have to select it manually, I feel like I wouldn't use it. But if it does the thing that we're doing right now with the portrait mode, where yes. it just automatically does it, yeah. then I mm -hmm. could just later decide, oh yeah, maybe I want to watch this in my Vision Pro. Then I would absolutely use it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still going to be lower resolution. Like right. the, the resolution on those goggles is crazy, and this is still recording 4K60. Uh, so it will be a step back from what they're actually capable of displaying. It'll but be good yeah. enough. It'll be great, yeah, for looking... Yeah. I forgot to ask this um, from, from our, our, our uh, technicians that were helping us out, but they didn't really talk about 3D photography. No, I don't know. They didn't talk about Nobody it Nobody cares about 3D photography. I get it. But yeah. yeah, they didn't really talk about that, but I don't see why not. Yeah, I would because they did mention back when they did the Vision Pro that you could take pictures with the Vision Pro, yeah. which I yeah. still want us to do, by the way. We yeah. have to right. do that. I'm gonna, we're going to do street photography <laughs> with the Vision Pro. It's we're going to be so discreet. We're going to be so discreet. But... Oh, um, you would think, right? If they can do the video, why couldn't you do the photo? 
I, I yeah. They, they, they I, didn't I, say I, anything I, about that. So, and you know, very unlikely to confirm or deny if we were to have asked. And it's them a anyway. future firmware update. So yeah. yeah, you can stay tuned for a podcast in four yeah. months. Yeah. We'll have thoughts. Yeah. I've been using my Quest 2 a lot. The Vision Pro now reminds me of this. I've been using my Quest 2 a lot. I've been playing the Climb 2 a lot. And uh, does it show? It shows, right? Yeah, I can't see it's covered. Can you see that on camera? Does it? No. The staff is, they're not even. No. They're not engaged. They're like, you. no, there's no difference. Um, but yeah, so what uh, they my didn't segue. I see you last week. How would they know? <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely. <laughs> I promise you that. Are we segueing away? Is that what's happening Well, here? no, 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 no. So I'm just going around about because that's what I do. So the interesting segue, though, I've, I, I found this very strange. The experience of pushing gaming very hard this year. Yes. Oh, there you go. I you did bring us back. I okay. did I'm so shocked. I am I'm floored. I didn't expect that because I'm because they, they're pushing it hard. I was just probably like new GPU. Every year it's been more. They're more saying more. it's very fast. You that, know, I will then, say I did lean forward and be like, oh, that is surprising is the ray tracing. Yeah, because um, that is notoriously difficult. I mean, yeah. even for modern spec computers. The, the high, the, I don't know if you if you know much about ray tracing. I have no idea. My okay. kid has a switch. Yeah, the, the concept <laughs> of that is is light when it bounces off reflective surfaces, reflects. You should be able to see that reflection. In most video games, you don't. You just kind of see a muddy, muddy wash or no reflection at all. Ray tracing makes it look extremely real, yeah. almost hyper-realistic in some cases. They're going a little hard in, in some sure. games. Uh, and I think in the demo they showed us today, it was a little, like, well but beyond normal. But Correct. it's a demo. Correct. Yeah. It shows what ray tracing yes. does. Um, the fact that we're getting that in a phone, and there are some, like, dedicated PCs that will absolutely crap out if you try and turn oh. ray tracing on. You'll get down to, like, two frames per second if you try. There's that much data being drawn. My laptop can do it very well, but, I mean, it's like a jet engine, right? And it's it, a jet it, engine when you're word processing. Yeah, so but I live in course, Canada. It's cold there. It's great. It's a benefit. It saves me on heating bills. So don't criticize. <laughs> Do you know how much power you're driving? <laughs> I don't want to know the truth. Okay, I don't know the truth. But but yeah, the gaming stuff. They they, they definitely are making the phone a whole lot more powerful. Yeah, um, like and they're going after Steam decks. They're going. Think at, so. yeah, I think so. I think they're going after Steam decks. I think they're going. Well, you know, switches, um, even gaming laptops and stuff. I mean, they I did say that Assassin Creed, Assassin's Creed Mirage, which is going to be the next game, will be released. Will be on iPhone. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not going to be day one release, I don't think. It comes like in the following year and a couple months later. But like, it is bananas that it's. But it's gonna not run like on. a mobile version. Correct. It's of the something. full it's game. The game. Yeah. Yeah. It's bananas that it runs on an iPhone. Yeah. They also showed a mobile game, which was the Division yeah. Two's version. You of know, mobile. and then re-releases Resident Evil Village and and four. And four. And stuff like that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, but this is I I, I found I found that quite interesting because like even last year they kind of were like, oh, our gaming capabilities better on the iPhone mm -hmm. 14. Mm -hmm. Like, here's some mobile games. You're like, well, yeah, okay, everything plays mobile games fine. So right. it was very interesting that that kind of direction. It would be cool if I could play the games that I actually play on my iPhone. Uh, and it was capable of running them natively. Yeah, uh, I would be very interested in that. And I think we're getting closer. There you go. There you I go. mean, but on flights is my like productivity peak. Nothing can distract me. If my phone can play good <laughs> games, yeah, that'll be a real drawback for well, us getting episodes. But you've, you've out on said the you want the you want the Vision Pro eventually for flights. I know. And then afterwards, I realized like I should be working. But yes, I just I feel so bad for the attendant who comes by and they're like, "Can I get you a drink?" And you just like stare at them with your with your goggles on. That's terrible. It's very strange i don't know i don't like it i don't like it all right so would you like to you you had a you mentioned that you had a segue for us what have you been up to oh did i what yeah did I, oh last night you were you couldn't sleep oh yeah so um we always talk about we're not gonna do too much but we always talk about but yes i can't sleep i don't know what it is especially when i'm on trips yeah, yeah terrible plus a disaster I mean, you know jordan snores and uh so i was um I watched a Mizoguchi film. This is like an old school Japanese director from the 50s. Is this, I watched... is this a Jordan suggestion? No, 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 no. I haven't seen any of his films. Yeah, I, I haven't either. I mean, I love Japanese So why'd you fire that up? I, you know, I, it came up on something. That's social media works. It came up on something, and it was it was talking about Mizuguchi films and how they're they're very very good. And I looked at reviews, and they were very high. And I was like, I've never heard of these movies. So I watched Ugetsu. It was beautiful, and uh, the art direction is great. My I mean, my grandfather was an Oscar nominated art director in Japanese cinema. So I was like, oh, this is this is really. He didn't make those, but it was really. <laughs> You know, but and uh, and made, let uh, the who gets who is beautiful, but the art director for that did not get an Oscar. I don't think so. Wasn't nearly as good as your grandpa. No, no, but still, it was very beautifully shot and very, very like wonderful film. Highly recommended. That's what I did, but that was just last night. Okay, that's not really a segue. <laughs> that's a statement. Yeah, yeah, that was just. Uh 
moving on. Okay. Well, <laughs> we, uh, we're, we're going to get to the tech support and never read the comments. We'll start with tech support. We have a message from... How, a- do, you, how do you segue from a 1954 black and white Japanese cinema movie to tech, like, technical questions? I was in the middle of doing oh, so. And, oh, but I'm just, and I thought I did quite well. There's no, throw me. There's no segue. I, anyway, but we're going to listen to a message from Koi Kirkland. So I am a relatively new photographer, and I just completed a wonderful trip with my wife to Greece. I was looking to print the photos and memories of that trip on an 8.5 by 11 photo book. Um, when I was building the book on Style Digital, Mixbook, and other print services, it would flag my images as too low quality. Uh, when I would do a two-page spread specifically. I am shooting with a 24-megapixel sensor, and I did not crop the images in post. Um, I know that professionals have been printing large for years, even before 24 megapixels was even thought of. Do you have a recommendation of what is a, quote, safe recommendation of print size to megapixel ratio? If you have a recommended photo book printing service, please let me know as well. Thank you. 24 megapixels. So it's an eight and a half by 11. Yeah, but it's a two. double spread. Times that should two. be enough. That should be definitely enough. I no think the problem. I, you know what I bet the problem is? Um, he's not saving it with a high enough uh, PPI or DPI. Yes. Yeah. I think it's probably saving to 72. You want to change that to 300. Yes. Because your actual native resolution does not. It's just how it's saving that file. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And you'd think the company could just like take the actual resolution of the file and then redo it. But they don't. They're very picky about that. So that's probably the issue. He was also wondering what his favorite uh, book company was just for stuff. And I mean, Oh, yeah. What do you do? You print uh, books? My I don't wife print books. A, my wife prints a ton of those books for like our vacations and stuff. And... Um, um, uh, she uses Shutterfly. She likes it. You know, I'm not. I'm not a big Shutterfly guy, no, but you know, you know, but it works. Fine. It's fine. easy and it works. So yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be my recommendation. But uh, no, I don't make. I don't make books. I think we should do a deep. I would be actually really curious what the state of like photo book printing is yeah. right now because I haven't really looked into it in a while, and it's time for me to. I mean, I've. I got a second kid. She's basically undocumented in print form at this point. Yeah. So I should get on it. Yeah. We got doc- we were talking about like everything's digital now. We're talking about the iCloud storage, which well, here's a segue. By the way, has been now improved. Apple iCloud, you can now go up to either 12? six terabytes or twelve terabytes. 12 terabytes yeah. Anyways, we were talking about how you take all your digital files and when we were kids, uh, it was all shoe boxes, four by six photos and shoe boxes, right? Oh, and, that's right. You guys were talking about this. I know, because we're old. And Darren checked out. Yeah, and I was like, Oh, well, digital files, like how do you it's not that it's it's hard to archive, but it's hard to keep track of what you have archived and haven't archived. And and I was saying I'm just going to print every single digital file that I have out as a four by six on Petapixel's dime, hopefully. Oh yeah, and then absolutely. just put that in like a closet full of shoeboxes. And then delete the digital. Yeah. Oh yeah. Otherwise, there's no stakes. So yeah, analog is cool again. You're to- you don't you're not with it. You're not in the cultural zeitgeist. All right. Well, that's not really an answer to the technical questions. Right. But no, I, fair enough. I appreciate that. Uh, so Shutterfly is- and raise your PPI. Yes, that's what it is. 300, not 72. 300. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, this one is an email from R. Gissel. Uh, he asks, with the popularity of compact or point-and-shoot cameras like the Ricoh G3, Fuji X100B, it's clear that there's a market for handy, lightweight cameras. One thing that these cameras lack is good zoom range. Mm. Clearly, there's a market for lightweight, handy, all-in-one zoom lens that you can put on a compact camera body, something you can stick on your camera and carry around all day without breaking your wrist, but has a zoom range to get everything you want. This sounds like it's going to break physics. Right. <laughs> um, so here's my question. Why do all the full-frame manufacturers suck, in all caps, at making this kind of lens? The Tamron 28 to 200 Di3 is sadly way, way better Great than lens. any of the first party offerings. What gives? They can clearly make them for APS C cameras, as evidenced by the 18 to 135 offerings, but they don't make decent options for full frame. So I think we have to Why unpack not? this in a few ways. So, first off, let's just talk about. There's, it's easier to make super zooms for smaller size sensors, right? And so, first off, as far as pocket size goes, because he's mentioning X100Vs and Ricoh GRs and stuff, right? And so, there were cameras like that. I mean, um, you know... ZS100, 200. Yeah, those were really nice, right? Or X100. Nikon P900s, P9000s, right? Like, these smaller one-inch type cameras and stuff that have these big super zooms. And once you go up to APS-C, that's when things start to get complicated. It's no longer going to be a pocket size lens. Uh, actually, for APS-C, though, there are a lot of nice digital lenses, like the 18 to 300s. Third-party manufacturers do a great job with those. Yeah, uh, but but, but wh- he's asking, but why Why not they? full frame? Yeah. <laughs> so they do. I mean, Ni- Nikon <laughs> does, right? Yeah, Nikon's got a 24 to 240 that yeah. our former colleague... 24 Barney, to 200, I think. It's above yeah. 199. The Z-type. <laughs> 
uh, our former colleague Barney Britton was a big fan of. Yeah. Uh, definitely wanted us to review that back in the day. Canon's got one as well. Uh, Sony's got one that's pretty long in the tooth, yeah. unfortunately. That, that's maybe the 24 to 240. I don't know. Yeah, see, we don't even look at those very often. I'm not right? checking your work today either. No, so you know. It's all in your memory. I, I don't think super zooms are that bad. I mean, when we talk about the quality of super zooms in a negative way, we're really going back to like the early days, like SLR days. Yeah. They were largely atrocious. It was a yeah. serious compromise, but they've been pretty good for a long time. So, but so I guess answer his question, why do you think the first party camera companies don't make very many of these? Because the third party manufacturers establish reputation for making these lenses in the first place. And then number two fraction making quite decent ones. Mm -hmm. So maybe they feel like they can't compete. I don't know. What I would really love to see is first, like back in the SLR days, some of the first parties did have like premium super zoom lens. Do you remember the Canon 28 to 300? Oh, L series? Like a giant like push pull. Uh, that's it wasn't what I, very good. It, no, it wasn't very good. <laughs> But the idea behind it was like, okay, here's your do-everything lens. Um, and who's actually done a good job with that is OM with the 12 to 100, which is like I love a that lens. lens. Yeah. You know, it's professional build quality. It's very good optically. It's slow. That's the trade-off. Yeah. I would love to see some of the first-party camera manufacturers say, like, look, we don't care if it's a little slow. That's the compromise. But we're going to make it professional, good focus motor, you know. Everything do you think that's a finish. sticking point for them that it ha that they end up going kind of slow and they don't like putting that six three or seven one on there? I know no. it's a perception issue yeah. because so many people love that twelve to one hundred, which is equivalent to an f eight. You know, yeah. if these companies released a twenty four to two hundred f eight, everybody would scoff at it, and I'd be like, that sounds great. Yeah, isn't there a zoom lens or a, a tele zoom or just a telephoto that you liked? You did it during the TED shootout. You picked a ridiculously. Oh, like, I, I as a challenge to myself, yeah. right to to give TED four a sporting chance of actually winning, I, I gave myself a handicap by using, it was the 600 mil uh, F11s. They're yeah. like really dark. They're already like diffraction set. Like um, you can't change aperture, but you know, they're sharp enough and they're lightweight and they're compact. So, so they, they have make a purpose. that. Yeah. So. yeah, on purpose. So there are options. I don't think slow is that bad anymore because you know, you ISOs could be raised. They're not bad. Our, our noise levels are so much lower than they used to be. And also, you know, we talked about before how digital cameras can correct a lot of lens deficiencies in post optically automatically so yeah manufacturers could make compact lenses that are not humongous like the 2300 l series that would cover full frame so why don't they i don't know nobody travels i don't know yeah they didn't like for a couple of years i think that's yeah. fair to say yeah and sure. as they're starting to really fill out those lines now that they've got their basics are pretty much all covered they can start to work on some more you know niche optics i think that would make a lot of sense but at the same time if you look First party manufacturers do make some nice super zooms. Full frame, they do. I can't speak to the Canon, I haven't used it. Can't no. speak to the Sony. I've the heard Nikon's the Nikon's good. good by someone whose opinion I respect. I think the Sony was good too. So I'm gonna do something unusual here because uh, I'm human and I messed up. I forgot to throw us to the Blair interview. Uh huh. So I'm gonna throw us to the Blair interview. We're gonna talk, the three of us recorded this uh, last week uh, and we're gonna talk with Blair about some of the questions you guys had uh, about what he did up there in space and uh, he'll do his best to answer them. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, listen into that now. So here we are, we're joined by uh, photographer Blair Bunting. He's the photographer who went into the edge of space to photograph uh, a U-2 spy plane from another U-2 spy plane. And we're going to chat about a few of the questions we've seen uh, come up regarding that shoot. Chris and Jordan and I were all there with him. So we, uh, the, the group is back together after several months of <laughs> working on that doc. And uh, Blair, how you doing? How's it been? Yeah, it's, uh, I'm doing well, man. Uh, thanks. And, and it's good to see you guys. Um, it's been... It's been very freeing um, because uh, obviously you guys know we shot this uh, back in April and before then was about almost a year prior of planning that we really couldn't talk about it. And so yeah. there's a certain amount of just uh, kind of there's a lot of weight off my shoulders within being able to actually discuss it and, and show it to people. Um, yeah, other than that, just a lot of interviews. But at the same time, those are important because it's just cool to see people's enthusiasm about it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can how say has that like whole decompression. Uh, sorry. How has that whole press junket thing been? I mean, all the media stuff having to like, how's that been to you? You know, it, it's, it's it, that, that's kind of part of the, the, the project that we took on. Um, being someone who is actually quite shy. I don't like being in front of the camera at all. Oh, sorry um, about but, this. <laughs> it's all good, dude. <laughs> um, but, but it's necessary because uh, what we did 
was not only kind of to show some great art, but it was also to bring recognition um, to the base and, and that yeah. the, the platform and the people around it. So I, it's, it's okay. Um, it, it's fun when you get a cool question that you didn't get from a prior. A lot of people yeah. want to ask, you know, <laughs> uh, th- there's a lot of the same questions. What's next and whatnot. But, but, but every once in a while you get one that's a, that's a real zinger. <laughs> Well, we'll see if we can zing you. Yeah, no, we're Sounds not actually going to. Yeah, uh, but I but I am really curious because we filmed while we were at the base, but you were still there after we left. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm curious, like you've got the giant group shot of you two pilots um, and stuff yeah. like that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about like what it was like shooting that, how you lit it, anything like that? Nope. <laughs> no. um, All right. Next question. No, <laughs> not because it's classified. Not because it's classified. No, um, <laughs> that one, uh, I think you guys kind of started to see the beginning of it, um, but I started to lose my memory pretty badly after the flight. Um, when you get pumped full of oxygen and then you go up to those altitudes and you come back and nitrogen is reintroduced to your system, your short-term memory starts to go. Um, for me, that was about an hour, an hour and a half, I think, after landing um, that, um, that I really started to start missing out on memories. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. uh, the first memory that I, that I don't have that I, I can only tell because there's pictures of it happening was talking to my daughter. Um, and I don't remember calling my parents at all. Um, there's little kind of tidbits that, uh, exist uh-huh. throughout the weekend and, and in that subsequent week. But, uh, but yeah, I, I know that we had all the pilots out there. Um, one of the things. So you that, don't remember us going to the pilot bar after and then going to two breweries after that? <laughs> really? No, that, yeah, no, that actually happened. <laughs> um, the, the other thing, when we went and did the second day interview, you told me so many of the same stories that you had the night before. And yeah, when we started, you're like, I have some memory loss. I'm like, oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's very well, I'm glad you're okay. Like, I'm yeah, yeah. it's just like that. And you're not like, actually, like something's more horribly wrong with you. <laughs> yeah, it, that was one of uh, the, the nice things that I've, uh, that, that protection um, uh, or defense mechanism that exists is I don't remember all the pain that I was in um, uh, apparently after the flight because my, my wife is just like, you were absolutely miserable and your ears were exploding like every 30 or 40 minutes. Yeah, and yeah, I, I've put that all away. That, that that's <laughs> not good. I can remember the flight and um, a few things after, and then about a week later, I was in Southern California and flying home. And I remember the first time I saw my daughter when I got back. That's actually one of the probably the strongest memories of it all. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Very cool. You know what struck me about being there? I, I mean, first off, the base was amazing. It was a new experience. Yeah. I've never done that before. Everybody was so kind. Like everybody was so helpful. And you know, you really felt like you're part of a project that was doing an important kind of work for them. And so mm-hmm. I'm kind of curious. Like the feedback's been great on the videos. Like people have been really inspired. But uh, have you talked to a lot of the staff and pilots now in post production? Like how's how's that experience been? How have they been enjoying the experience? I have talked to an absolute ton. Um, I probably, those first three days are, um, 20 to 30 pilots a day, uh, new wow. ones, the ones I haven't met, um, all the way back to cold war era, um, and pilots that, uh, the, that platform used to be extremely secret. Um, and so even a camera on base wasn't allowed. And so they never got to express their kids. And one of the gentlemen I heard from said, you know, this piece gives me the ability to express to my grandkids what I did and that mm-hmm. I mean that was there's a couple that you get that you just like that uh, I don't deserve that recognition uh, that that's something that's well beyond what I actually did I, I went up there and I did a photo shoot but but I, I'm grateful for it um, and uh, yeah the response has been so positive um, I can't ask for much more than that I'll say we've even received a, a couple emails from uh, former pilots. Oh, cool! Very uh, from cool. the YouTube program that yeah. uh, have been like they're very grateful that you were able to do something like that. So Dude, it's, yeah, it, it's coming in from all over. That's awesome. That's <laughs> that's honestly that's what it's all about. So how did the the guys who are still you know at Beale right now? Uh, how did can you remember their reaction the first time you showed them the pictures that you got from up there? 
Um, I didn't show him, or maybe I showed him afterwards. Uh, not, I don't remember. Uh, no, I, I don't remember showing them while I was at the base. No, um, but like, you know, you, I'm sure you, like when you emailed them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Them, we, yeah. I mean, what was the, the thing is, is I, te- I still text with most of the uh, active pilots pretty much daily. Um, cool. A lot of them are in faraway places that are, you know, obviously like you've been working with. They're obviously just in faraway classified places. And uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, they, they've been extremely happy. Yeah. Um, the, it's actually kind of funny. Uh, I guess I'm trying to think what all to say without. Um, they have had fun at the squads with measuring tapes, getting the walls ready for how many images they can put up. On them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and, uh, I guess uh, so. People um, who, I mean, a lot, mo- almost everyone who's going to be listening to this has never been to Beale Air Force Base. Yeah. So, like on the walls in there, it's yeah. very common to see pictures of fighter jets and planes and the U2 planes that are there. Yeah. Um, but there's uh, there are some empty walls. There's a lot of hallways gonna... there. So yeah, yeah they're well, not going to stay empty there's forever. Hallways, but their thing is they, they were really expi- inspired by the project that they are knocking down walls in the bar. Oh, <laughs> so cool. they can have, wow. So they can have space for the images. <laughs> So, okay, it's yeah, a pretty small the bar, bar right? the bar looked pretty full like there wasn't oh, much yeah. space there there's a lot of cool stuff isn't in that, that in that isn't bar isn't that bar amazing though i mean oh, yeah. there's so, cool. so much i wish we could have um, filmed more of it like uh, we yeah. have a little footage of you walking in but everyone said do not film in the bar yeah, yeah. There, there's some sensitive stuff there but at the same time it, it's really a that's a place where it's a it's a really you you walk into it and you can you feel that honor of being able to be in there and that that's yeah. that's Again, uh, that's just kind of part of what we were talking about uh, of that community that they invited us into while we were there. And they, yeah. they didn't, it wasn't like, no, don't come in the bar. It was, it was, do you guys want a beer? And that was yeah, kind of the, welcoming. yeah, it's very cool. You know, it's interesting too, because we, of course, there's a lot of talk about danger and, and all yeah. the issues and, and stuff like that. And so what was really cool about the bar, it was just neat to see all the pilots. That's like the place where they just flip a switch and all the pressure goes away and all, and mm-hmm. it's just like mission done, relax. And everybody's just having a great time. Yeah. They were like really almost different see. people as soon as we were in there. Yeah. But aren't we all? They yeah. really T-bone, all is, T-Bone was having a good time. <laughs> <And> <laughs> absolute <laughs> riot. Yeah, Cause I mean, that these are professional. Is, <laughs> like when we were like, like officers, you got, right? Yeah. When we were doing the interviews. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> they were very different when they were on, like when you were interviewing him and then like when we were prepping you and we were like actually out doing the mission. But as soon as like it was over, that man, that was a completely different. He was, yeah. I can see why he's popular because he is funny. Oh, he is a good you know, dude. Also, what also blew me away is like, of course, the pilots get a lot of fanfare as they should, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing. But what, what, struck me that was really interesting is talking to the engineers and the technicians and yeah. and all the support staff, like all these sort of like unsung people that are working in the background and they're making sure the suits are working well. And they're making sure, you know, the planes feel properly and maintained properly. And, uh, that was actually really cool just to see the whole workings of this giant machine that is BL air force base. Yeah. They, uh, when we first, so I guess if we go back to, uh, when it got greenlit, and you get the message from the Pentagon that this is happening. Um, the first call after that is, when can we schedule you to get out to BL Air Force Base to get fitted for your spacesuit? Um, and that was like a four-day affair, but it was beyond just um, getting that suit. Um, it was going to every squadron, meeting all the people involved, and really getting kind of uh, that picture of what's going on. But but I'll say that the thing that probably... Um, formed my, 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 my passion for this project and also really humbled me was, uh, the first night we got there, um, it was Mike and I, and we had done some tours and everything. And then Nova said, um, do you want to go, uh, ride in the chase car for a bit? And, uh, right. of course everyone says yes. And it was like sunset <laughs> and it was beautiful out there. And they threw up, a, a number of planes and, um, for about two hours, just nonstop, just ripping down the runway. Oh, fun. Um, but what actually hit me and where I, the first time I realized the, the, how the grandiosity of this entire project was, we were driving back uh, after, you know how you chase the plane and you're underneath the plane, they touch and then they'll take off again and you circle around and come back, catch the next plane. We're driving back to catch the next plane and it was just, is beautiful light. And I realized like we are sitting here 
in a car chasing a U2 in the middle of a very, very secluded base that used to receive these from Area 51 specifically yeah. on this very runway. And in that connection to history, um, that, that, I can't understate like how much that, that really humbled me to, to, to take in that, like, we've been asked to do something very special. Um, and, and that, that was the moment at which the, that connection to everything at Beale and the platform and the, the legacy and the heritage of that plane, it, it hit home hard. Um, it's not that I didn't want to do it or, or I wasn't dedicated beforehand, but I realized that there's a lot on the line to make sure that, that we do it justice. Mm-hmm. Blair, I got a quick question for you because yeah. we're seeing this a ton in comments and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, did we tell you to juice up the drama? I mean, we're making a documentary, <laughs> you know, obviously we want like some narrative tension. So were we just like, give us more Blair? No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I've seen that a couple of times. Um, here, here's the thing. Um, I, I, was going into a project to do a photo shoot that God forbid something happened meant my death and meant leaving my daughter. Um, so it wasn't anything I took light. Um, I am actually really grateful that you guys kept it in. Um, we're asking viewers to spend over 20 minutes with us watching this documentary and, and I view it as being honest with them and, 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 and thanking them for spending the time with us. Um, no, I, if anything, the drama was dialed back because what you guys actually saw and what existed, um, sure. the, the truest drama was probably honestly two nights before, uh, the, after the day of how everything could be dangerous and deadly and all that stuff. Um, at about 3 AM, um, I woke up convulsing. I've never had it before and never since, thank God. Um, but like, uncontrollably shaking and Aaron um, uh, held my hand and, and she had a talk with me that night. Um, she said, okay, tomorrow we're going to wake up. We're going to have breakfast. We're going to go to the base. We're going to do the briefing. We're going to have lunch. We're going to come home. It's just one after it's just one step at a time Blair. And so right now we're going to go to sleep so that we can do the first thing in waking up. And that was, that was the only way I made it. I wanted so badly to back out. I didn't want to tell anyone. I didn't talk about it much. I didn't want to do it. Um, I was terrified. Um, but at the same time, I met everyone at the base. We had you guys there, and I really enjoyed your company. And I, after that moment, there I wasn't scared again. But but that that night uh, if the if the drama you saw on camera is a representative of that probably is 20 percent of what actually really existed within me um yeah i mean you guys saw it for the landing too um there's a lot of tears because uh, because it wasn't just me um aaron and my daughter um they gave up eight months of having a really good husband or dad around the house. I wasn't fun to be around. I wasn't mean. I just wasn't there for them. And um, one of the memories, actually, if we're going back before the memory just went away, that that was special to me that you actually don't have on camera, and I'm, I'm grateful we didn't, was Utah, my pilot, and I. Um, when we all wrapped having the champagne and the beer, um, you can't walk across the base in a space if they're kind of heavy. And so they bring out the bread van, and uh, they have the big lazy boys in there. And we both climbed in the back. Everyone had left. And we let our, our wives both sit in the lazy boys while we stood um, in our spacesuits on the way back all the way to the PSD to get them off. And uh, that was my first step I could even take this whole time of trying to tell Aaron, like, how much I really appreciated her being there. Um, and, and when it's the family involved, the emotion is real. And so, so yeah, you guys didn't ask me to dial it up. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I do owe you a debt of gratitude for letting me show it. Yeah. I appreciate how candid you were. You know, we'd never really met before that, right? We just talked briefly. Yep. And so, you know, you never know how, and that was, that was actually really, uh, for me, uh, the, probably the biggest responsibility was mm-hmm. I have to engage with you. I have to ask you questions, 
you know, not that I want to push you, but I want to get honest emotion out of yeah. you and really what your experience is like. So that was an interesting dynamic. And so I just appreciate that you guys are so welcoming, you know, okay. all the crew were, were super nice, you know, and we were able to build that sort of camaraderie very quickly so that we could do these candid interviews we could get these impo- and even to, to we had to do it a few times right like there's a few days where i'm like blair i'm sorry but i want to ask you some more stuff yeah. and you're always like yep uh i'm we could tell you're going through difficult times but you're like Let's but he's a it. consummate professional let's make it happen well yeah. but it's it's also about like yeah you really kind of gave of yourself to do that yeah and you could have easily been like guys there's too much going on i'm sorry i can't right you could have done that and that'd be totally reasonable it would have been reasonable, but it wouldn't have been yeah. respectful. Um, I, I mean, you guys took a lot on to randomly come to a project that sounded absolutely insane. I even realized it when I was saying it to you guys a year ago. Um, so, so no, I, I owed it to you guys. And again, we also owe it to the people that are watching this, that, that, um, you know, it, it's, it's telling the fullest picture of what actually the experience yeah. was. Um, and there are some people that I think you guys <laughs> joked about it yesterday in the podcast or the day two days ago about there's some people that are like, yeah, well, you know, I could have done that without crying and good for <laughs> yeah. them. That, that's yeah. really wonderful. But, but, <laughs> but I'd like them to say that after sitting through that one hour, one and a half hour session uh, that you had to for the training. Like, okay. <laughs> that. About that. So the parts that, that we, you talked about, even in the thing, uh, yes, or the podcast, and I don't know if it's even on camera. I think there were certain parts that we had cameras out for. Yeah, it wasn't hitting the rocks or the trees or the power lines. That, that I flew yeah, when I was flying F-16s. It. Those were all that was normal. We F-16s, the Thunderbirds. <laughs> when I got ready for the Thunderbirds flight, literally, I showed up at the base. They said, "Have you flown one before?" I said, "Yes," and they're like, "Cool. Let's talk about how not to break your femur." Great. <laughs> um, that was genuinely it. But no, um, none of those things scared me about this. Um, what scared me was the reality of what we had and where we were going to be in altitude. Um, you don't, you don't, for example, when you punch out, um, at the altitude we're at, you get no parachute for minutes, many minutes, actually a lot more than you want to expect. Um, and the reason for that is they're hoping you'll hit terminal velocity, fall fast enough that when your oxygen bottle runs out, you can open your helmet and breathe because most suffocate. So I was going into this, not worried about hitting rocks and trees, but the idea of when we, when we, they said, you know, first things first, remain calm. That wasn't like a joke, like, oh, ha ha ha, remain calm. That was, hey, <laughs> there might be enough oxygen in the tank of the chair to keep you from suffocating before you get to breathable air because it's that long of a fall. Yeah, wow. So that was the terrifying part. And beyond that, I mean... We, we got to hear about the, the craziness of like, if you have a decompression and there's a suit leak, you're going to boil to death instantly and you'll turn into an ice cube a second later. Like th- those were all, <laughs> yeah. those were all things we just had to face. Um, but and, it's, the, and they hit you with them like one after the other too. Yeah. I mean, that I was a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you don't really get to process the first one before they've added three more <laughs> oh, possible things on it. So yeah. yeah, it's totally understandable. And I think that's what the, the, the armchair warriors are, are not really fully understanding is like that. It's just tough to process all that. And that's yeah. okay. I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion and I don't mind that, but, but yeah, that was actually one of the most special parts uh, or one of the more special parts that the base did was that second day that we were actually there when Aaron was there um, and we asked for the cameras to be removed from the room. We brought her in and she did the briefing with me. And not only did it, was there comfort in her seeing what I'm going into, but they included her in everything. Like they're like, Hey, do you want to try, you know, space food, apple pie? And we're both yeah. sitting there having apple pie while they're explaining the suit to us. And like they, when we got to the pressure chamber to start uh, going through uh, testing my suit, you know, they had Aaron right there with headphones on and able to talk to him. And, <clears throat> and that actually, I mean, there were little things that, yeah, that, that, that second day onward, I was, I was ready to rock. So we have a uh, enough time for one more okay. question. Um, what was it like to see what you had done, what you'd captured up there after for the first time? Do you remember doing that, especially on the uh, A7R5 that had the failed LCD that you mm. still shot on 
uh, despite the failed LCD. Like, so t- walk us through oh. was like looking at the pictures for the first time. Or is that in the memory hole? <laughs> yeah. No, like, that's there. That, I guess, well, I mean, he, he did eventually see them again for the first time. If he can't even remember the first, first time, it was still a first time at some point. We're going to go to that A7R5 real fast. Cause I've gotten some people like you had a backup. Why don't you use it? One of the single scariest times up there that I haven't mentioned is Mike handed me my a7R5 with the grip on and then the backup with a strap. And then I had the uh, Z72 with my dad's lens. <clears throat> and we had the failure happen on the, the main body, which, with, which had the grip. And so I was going to go to the backup body, but he had left this big, I don't know what kind of strap it was on it. And I went to pull it up and it was around the ejection handle. <laughs> So that's the reason why I didn't go to a backup and shot it You're blind. Like, I'm not going to yank on that really oh, hard dude, right now. <laughs> like, I, I mean, it's yeah. a plane, like they said, you can't have one person punch up. Everyone has to go because th- when you see like us walking to the plane and you have those like metal things on the heels, um, those are called spurs. And those are connected to metal cables in the cockpit. So you can't even move your legs out that easily because they're constantly having a tension on it. Um, the whole point of them is when you punch out, they suck your legs back in so you don't rip them off on the way out. Yeah. Um, and so, so yeah, the, the, the reason why I didn't go to that backup and we shot it blind, but also the settings I had on the, the, the primary body, you know, once I knew there was a shutter and kind of went through my mind what was probably the failure and what was happening, um, you just kind of kind of have to trust that it's going to be fine. And, and when I saw the pictures, especially the ones that had that collar on it, um, the people kind of, we, we've, we've definitely seen a few people that don't like the, uh, the post-production of the shots and that's fine. Um, that's, that's, that's what the art is. The, the beauty is being able to look at a subject two different ways. And and, and so they are yeah. very much, their, their opinion is as valid as mine. And I, I don't mind that. Um, but to, for things like the color and things like the sun flare and all that kind of stuff in some of the cockpit canopy shots, um, those are all there. That's the canopy. Um, you don't get much of an option. It's two and a half inches thick. So it's going to cast down sun flares no matter what. So my decision is once we got up to altitude to start working with that versus trying to clear out enough. And then, you know, when the ice started coming in, can I, can I get a shot before we, we can't see things. Um, but the false color, that's kind of a fun photo thing. That's, um, everyone knows what it's like to shoot a circular polarizer up and darken out the blue sky. I took a circular polarizer up there thinking I'll darken out the blue sky, forgetting or not forgetting, but just not even understanding what it meant when we would leave the atmosphere and it would be blackness around us. So at one point we shot the second plane low and all of a sudden I, we had rainbow colors everywhere, but that's actually what happens when you shoot a circular polar back down through the atmosphere because Very your cool. sun is on axis and therefore it creates the color pattern, which you're seeing actually real violet and, and real, real rainbow uh, aspects of that, 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 that further are the beginning side of it. I think they look cool. Thank you. Personally. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you got the shots, you, you got the moments, but Looking back, is there anything you would have done differently photographically as far as the gear or choices you made? Or are there any sort of angles and stuff like, oh, let's go up again because I, I really wanted to catch that one thing. <laughs> I, I know this sounds cocky, but no, um, I'm so grateful that that we, we got what we did. Um, in many ways, I my, my heart is full because I... I went up there wanting uh, 10 to 12 shots and uh, we came back with 44. Um, uh, the, the, the general populace is seeing, I think 38. Um, there are some shots that we created that we knew weren't going to be declassed because they contained information or uh, stuff that was not allowed to be shown. But, but I, I feel so grateful for what we did get. Um, because it was a very, very tough shoot. And so, so no, I, you know, I could always want more, but, but I, I'm, 
in my heart, I'm, I'm content with this whole thing. I, I'm very, very happy with the, yeah. the, the body of work that came from it. Awesome. Blair, thanks for joining us. Thank thanks you for, guys. Uh, answering some of the questions that have come up and chat no with us about it some more. Again, thanks for bringing us along. We really much, <laughs> we love being there for it. Help really liked yeah, telling the story, experience. helping tell it. So appreciate the opportunity and it's, uh, it's good to see you again. <laughs> Likewise guys. Thank you for joining. It, 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 it meant a lot to me. Us too. Thanks man. Great. Thanks Blair. Thanks. That was great, right? I had enjoyed, I always enjoy talking to Blair. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's nice to see just in the background things that you can't necessarily throw into the dock, um, but you still want to have that context because it was really quite an amazing journey. It was quite an amazing experience. Yeah. There's a lot that, that went in the background to make that happen. So on that note, the in the never read the comments, the, the two of the comments that we're going to talk about are directly related to that. Oh, so this one is, uh, we're going to listen in. This is from Logan on SpeakPipe. Let's listen in. If Chris is Maverick and Jordan is Goose, does that mean Jaren is Iceman or Stinger? Son, your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. I, I mean, I... How, what's your beach volleyball game like? Uh, it used to be good, and then I got old. Okay, because, like, yeah, you could be my wingman any time, um, but I don't know. I, I You're more like Tom Skerritt's character. You're like the, you know, you're, you're sort of, like, leading Top Gun program. Or you're Kelly McGill. You're Kelly McGillis. <laughs> I don't know. I get like I, I've seen Jaron when he gives you like the the stone eyes, and that has a real Iceman Val Kilmer uh, vibe to me. So really? I'm gonna I'm gonna go Iceman in that. Although yeah, Kelly. like can, like the contempt is he doing it right now? No, just like I'm this. Con- yeah. This like I I mean this. Yeah. Okay. And it's oh. it's happening. All right. Yeah. I, I'm not going to comment. That's is up to you guys who, to decide. Who do you feel represents you. Okay. I don't know. I don't. I, I think I I'd leave it to mystery, or if they can agree with you guys. I, I've got no nothing to add to that. But what I do have is from David. Hey guys, just wanted to thank you and congratulate you on the U2 documentary video. That was an amazing piece of work, and I tell you, I've watched it several times, and each time, gotten a lump in my throat. Um, you know, it's, it makes me proud what we, what our, what our men and women do, uh, in support of our security here in the country and, um, you know, and also what went into the, the tremendous amount of planning, uh, for that photo shoot, uh, that is just beyond anything that I've ever seen before. And I just wanted to congratulate you and thank you guys for putting that together. Take care. We appreciate you saying that. I mean, to be, to be honest, like, yes, we're saying here we want more views because not that we want them, just that we feel like a lot of people put a lot of time and work into this. And I think they deserve, you know, to get that recognition, but also everybody's comments on this have been really, almost everybody's comments on this have been really positive uh, and very positive. Like not just like, Hey, great job. But like, you moved me. I really appreciate that. I think it was a good piece. So well, that was, we really appreciate it. Here's why I keep campaigning for the views is because that was one of the best like experiences making something I've had in a very long time. And I want to do more of that stuff. And it's hard to justify if the views yeah. aren't good. So please tell your friends, share it around. Uh, I think it's a really, yeah, it's a piece of work I'm proud of. And Blair did something amazing. So yeah. you should spread it around. All right. Last two comments. First one, the la- the first of the last two is from David. I, the, the rest of that is not is not words. So it's just from David. I'm going to be in Calgary for a conference October 1st through the 4th. What are your weekly autograph sessions? Do you guys do that? Do you guys like set up a table out in front of your houses and just sit there and wait? I'm, I'm we sure. don't love giving out our home addresses. <laughs> um, I don't understand why. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, I'm sure David's just trying to be nice. I, do, do people do autographs anymore? I don't know. I, I think it's not, really, he just wants to shake. I've hand. never yeah, signed. Exactly. Him. I think it's a selfie actually at this yeah. point, but, uh, I don't know. We I mean, shoot downtown. Get, Cal- some, yeah. get some batteries from the camera store. <laughs> <and> say, <"Hey." laughs> yeah. Go to the camera store and then just wait there until we show up. It's bound to happen. I will forget something yeah. and I will need to pick up replacement. If you parts. wander around downtown Calgary long enough as well, you'll see us. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and absolutely. the camera store, not a camera no, store. We're not going to all of them to <laughs> find you. Yeah, the yeah. camera store is an actual store. But yeah. we appreciate that, David. You might not know it if you're not from the region and you're only visiting Calgary. October if you do want an autograph, we'll give you. I mean, sure, I absolutely, totally yeah, I will. absolutely, yeah. no problem, no problem. But not our home address. No. Not our home address. Last comment is from Red Jack Twenty Two. Just watched the new A Seven C video. What is on the wish list for the eventual A Seven Five? 
I so what do I want? He um, wants to upgrade to that when it finally does come out from his A7 III. So right. he skipped the four. He wants to wait for the five. Sure, Makes absolutely. Sense. I mean, I th what I want and what I think we'll get. I don't know if it'll be a stack sensor, but certainly a faster readout sensor. I think would be really nice. And of course, the autofocusing is going to go through trickle down. The AI autofocusing that we have. I, I know AI. Nope, you didn't do that. I didn't do that. I'm sorry. The, Air quotes. The deep machine learning. The deep machine. Deep machine. So the deep machine stuff. I Did think. Did you notice how they said machine learning like constantly in that presentation? ML. And not AI once. Like which, which, which one? Thank you. During Apple. the Apple presentation. Oh, that's because that's Let's what it is. Let's make that standard. Why yeah. do? Why must Thank all you, things Apple. be AI? Yeah. Um, Anyways, anyway, you, that was a detour. You, you want their autofocus that... Well, I, we're going to get it. There's no question. So the, the 5 is going to have that. What I want to see is a faster readout sensor. Um, I don't know if we need more resolution. I don't I think we the resolution. Either. Yeah, but if the, if the sensor reads out faster, great. The autofocus will be better. Um, yeah, maybe a longer buffer. You know, really make it a nice first style camera for sports and action. But yeah, I mean... I think it's worth waiting, sure. Yeah, I want the screen that they put in the A7R5, the greatest display design ever put in a camera that they refuse to put into other cameras, even though the A7R5 isn't actually a good video camera. It's the perfect flip <laughs> screen for video. They put it in there. They keep releasing new video cameras. Like, look at this great camera for video. It doesn't have the screen that would be perfect for video. It drives me you crazy. Said, yeah, you sound actually incensed. <laughs> It, it's, every time they announce it, I'm like, does, is it there? Is it back? I love that display so much. And when we were shooting the dock, Chris is just having a great time filming with that different oh, it, angles. Yeah, even, you know what? There's no shot he can't capture with that screen. And it's nowhere. It's don't only wait. on that one. Just get the A7R5 right now. Spend the money. Don't worry about Not it. Not a very good video. Don't. Man. Who cares about video? Don't wait. And then I you care get a little bit. Yeah, you know, I know you don't. And you get beautiful files. You get the I care. AI autofocus. You get uh, yeah the AI. Yeah, yeah, autofocus. I saw it. I saw you get it. all that cool yeah. stuff. So there you go. That's my recommendation. Um. Okay. Do when do you think we're going to see that camera? Ooh, I think it's still a little ways out. I mean, I think we're going to see A9 series get updated first. Um, that's the big one, and I think we'll maybe see another A1, honestly, before they go back to that. And then that would be the next one. So you're saying guess. probably fall of next year, then? Yeah, because you know A7C2 just came out, the A7CR. I mean, this is a lot to kind of carry the line a little bit. And then I guess if you're going to do A9, you'd want that for summer next year because i think isn't there an olympics or something next year i've lost track i don't I'm know pretty sure there like is 14 years there might be olympics people olympics. running somewhere in the world yeah. i'm not sure <laughs> there's got to be an event that they're aiming for because i think that's what canon's doing <laughs> right. right now with the r1 I right mean, whenever that comes out if yeah. that sensor ever works right so you have no idea what they're doing. no idea all right cool that's it yeah well hey f uh, so big thanks to apple not only yeah. for having us out there but letting us use their podcast space yeah uh, thank you for that and this has been uh, really nice and much more comfortable yeah yes. we, this is the first time we've ever podcasted in the same room looking at each other i know yeah. but don't don't uh, com i mean please leave comments below first off if you have any questions about the phone anything that we haven't covered please do leave us in the comments yeah, we're we going to be working on that yeah. so we yeah. will read these comments we read the comments the right and we, we always try to answer that stuff but also uh don't comment on how you really like all of us in the same room because it's expensive <laughs> yeah you know and jordan and i see each other enough like it's nice to just have you know your own place we didn't um, even touch on the fact we're sharing a hotel room this trip so, yeah yeah, yeah. But, and, you know so you're kind of you mentioned it you said that he snores i think that that kind of got yeah, the idea they might have thought it was through the wall <laughs> it's not like room. yeah it's yeah. not like i won't go pantless around jordan but if i'm in the cover of my own home i can go pantless and it doesn't matter no, i like that's where you go with this anyway next everybody week, was thinking it <laughs> next no week one. oh it will be the first time that I will be in my new studio. I hope that I will have most yes. of the lights set yeah, up. That's why we can't be together because you know you're in Portland and you have your own studio yeah. and your home address is. Fuck yeah, just <laughs> thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks everyone for joining us this week. Thanks again to uh, the Apple and everyone that was stopped. Worked so with. helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And great. So uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Thank you to the podcast team for tolerating our inane conversation. Yeah. That must have yeah. been rough. <laughs> <laughs>